And then the questions. Okay. So you had mentioned um, <laughs> you had mentioned that you uh, want to stay within the domain of, of uh, the Oriental medicine practitioners. Okay. Initially. Initially. Okay. So um, one of the things on on the mind of the practitioner, uh, any professional service provider, is a full practice. That's the game that they're in. So that's the language that they want to be taught. Now. The, um, a lot of the questions that we're going to go over and cover, frequently asked questions, are stuff that needs to be handled and addressed. But initially, what's going to bring somebody and what's going to be the magnet, the super attractive magnet, is full practice. Okay, that's the Got language. It. That's the language. Okay, so just right. uh, FYI. Got it. Yes. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, que your first question is? Let's see. So are there steps to coaching? Like, do we take somebody through, I guess that's my question. For me, the, the steps is they have, to, uh, they have to be have some sort of structure. That's step one. Mm -hmm. um, but in general, coaching, like when we're working with people, like when you're working with me, are there things that you're looking for that a person has handled I don't know. Maybe we, we, I just have to get a little grasp more around what we're talking about when we're talking about coaching. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Like I know that I, for me, I believe somebody's integrity needs to be handled. Right. Without right. integrity, nothing gets anywhere. Right. We're just going to, you know, I don't know. That's just right. the way I think. Totally. It, totally. Yes. Yeah. yeah um, rarely do clients come to us for integrity. It's uh, uh, At some mm. point, we have to weave it into the conversation. <laughs> All right. Uh, but rarely does somebody say, you know, I'm completely out of integrity in my life, <laughs> and you know, I'm looking for an integrity coach. Doesn't happen, you know. Right. Um, you know, there's that age-old saying: um, you hook people with what they, uh, you hook people with greed, and then give them what they need. <laughs> you know. <laughs> right. And, and and the greed is, you know, in this case is, um, you know, uh, acupuncturists or you know professionals or practitioners. They want a full practice, whether it's a dental practice, chiropractic practice coaching practice, law practice, whatever it is, professionals want a full practice. Right. Okay? They don't want integrity, <laughs> you know? That's That'd a be good distinction. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so, so just keep, keep that in mind. Um, so the initial, you know, the initial, um, you'd ask questions like the process. So I'm going to just kind of break down the process as I see it. It's just one awesome. way of doing it. It's not necessarily the right way. Um, yeah, I you know, there's been a lot of talk over the years about, you know, coaching and anybody in a professional practice is to give them a free consultation or a taste or a sample of what we do. And that's that's really the best marketing strategy that a lot of us believe what I grew up with. Of course, there's other people in the marketing world that are spinning it that says never do another free consultation again and sign up for my way to get big bucks for, you know, whatever. Um, it may work. I've never, you know, it hasn't worked for me. It's not something that I've approached. So I've always approached the complimentary consultation first as initial process. We're vetting each other out. I'm listening to see if they're a good match. They're getting a sense if I'm a good match. Um, and so that's really part of that whole process. So um, you have a secretary, you know, or an assistant, you know, she could even vet out some of the uh, people for you. OK, you might have a five five questions that says, you know, uh, you know, have you completed school? You know, do you you know, whatever your questions are to vet them out to see if they're they go to the next step. OK, the next step would be to have your assistant or you to send them out an assessment or a questionnaire. OK, so to have some form of fact finding uh, information could be one page, two page. It could be as much as 10 page or 15 page, depending on um you know, how you want to set things up. Um, there's two rules of thumb. One is vet them out really good with a long process. Um, and that's kind of your, really the commitment, you know, of working with you. The other is make it really easy for people to work with you in a two page information. So you'll mm -hmm. have to get a feel for what your style is. My style is a long process because I just don't want to waste time. It's a major investment. I don't care if the client's paying me big bucks or not. It takes a certain amount of energy and consciousness to onboard somebody, and so I want to make sure that they're meeting me there. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So um, 
once uh, once they get that process starts, I like to have an initial um, consult with them. They've got that questionnaire back to me. I've read through it. Um, I don't go through it with them. I may review it lightly, but yeah. the purpose now is I have some really good information, <laughs> and I may start teasing out and asking some of the questions similar on the on the questionnaire. Um, an initial consultation should really focus on the what the person is looking for um, and to really tease out how do you want it to be? How do you want your practice to be? How do you want your life to be? How do you want your team to be? Um, so it's really inviting them into a conversation of possibility. Okay, Most people will want to fight and as a coach you have to distinguish are you keeping them engaging in the conversation of possibility or are you noticing them slip away into here's the problems, reasons, excuses, or the way I am, or the way I wound up being, and get them to suspend that for a moment, uh, saying that we can coach and talk about that, but we're going to be exercising a new muscle here called the conversation of possibility. And the longer you can keep them in that, ultimately what will happen is there will be a natural gap that's created. Okay, The bigger the gap between how they want it to be, and what they see possible and where they are the way they wound up being from my experience the better the coaching client if right. there's a, a small gap and there's not a lot of room there's not the coaching process is it's a different process you know sometimes it becomes just more of a a confidant or something like that it's a different type of coaching but often the best coaching are people who want who are up to something and there's a gap okay yeah. Um, and then once the conversation of possibility is teased out, you know, it's just being really straight with them and ask them, so, you know, why do you think, you know, what do you think is in the way? What do you think is in the way for you? And so as a coach, then you're trained to listen, you know, is it mindset? Is it a lack of systems? Is it a lack of process? Is it a lack of support or confidence or whatever it is? So you're just being with them listening and you, you had talked about coaching training in the past. One of the things that we're trained for is listening to the distinctions. You know, what's missing? What are their values? What needs are not getting met? Were they incomplete or unresolved? You know, what are they tolerating? Okay, so there's about at least 200 different clues a really good coach is trained to listen for. Okay, so that's part of the training. So is that, okay, I, I'm, I listen all the time, right, because I'm in practice with people. Mm -hmm. um, but I think there's maybe some other distinction. Are we taping this, by the way? We are. Oh, awesome. This is, okay, I'm going to stop taking notes then. <laughs> I'm gonna just listen and stuff like that. The taping works very well, by the way. Cool. Well cool. worth it. Um, <clears throat> so there may be some other distinctions that I really need to be listening for. Yeah. 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 So, um, you know, there's a... Uh, there's a, a cheat sheet that, that I used in the beginning, you know, again, the cheat sheets are uh, what's missing for the client, mm -hmm. uh, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, um, problems, um, values, you know, there's like hundreds and hundreds of things yeah. that you can listen for. Um, just right. being with a client and being present and listening is great. Uh, what, what, in, what makes a better coach is to have some tools and being able to identify things in an individual's language uh, and to discern them and bring right. them bring them to the call. So just being with and listening and being present is great, but we also need to have something in terms of uh, being able to recognize the subtleties of what a client is sharing with us. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So um, that's kind of you know a long-winded version of kind of the. Um, the process of what I would call onboarding, you know, the client. Mm -hmm. um, once the two of you, uh, you know, in that process, you, you know, uh, the conversation around possibility, you know, is that something that you'd like some help with? Or is that something that you'd like support with? Uh, for me, I find it is just really the cleanest way to go about it. Yeah. You know, and they either say yes or no. Okay. And, yes. and for me, I'm always committed to my client getting what they want, so I will make recommendations or advice. If you're not going to work with me, go do this or go do that, you know, or go do AA or go do, you know, something. But uh, I'm committed to you, you know, making some progress here, um, and you're not going to do that. 
by not changing or getting support or educating yourself or whatever it is. Go do Landmark, you know? Got it. Okay. All right. Yeah. Next question. That was good. That that's exactly what I'm what I need to hear. That's uh that that alone will take me a moment to process because that's really I think where I am. That, that, I mean that is the game. 